welcome. It is Friday, which means it's time for another paint and slate with Lauren and myself, V, and uh, Hemi. <laughs> and a cat. And a cat. Because it's Friday and you because deserve Friday. a kitty. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to have some fun today with painting minis as usual. But this mini is a rather special mini because it looks like an outhouse. Oh, wait, it's I grabbed the wrong part. <laughs> like an outhouse. However, this is not your average outhouse. We have mm -hmm. from WizKids Game the Outhouse Mimic. It's the large mimic that is an outhouse. And let me tell you, we're going to have some fun painting this one up over the next couple weeks. But that is what we have planned for today to get started getting some base colors and everything onto this beauty. So it comes in two parts. You have the outhouse itself with the swinging door. Yes, it's actually functioning. How fun is that? But there is also this massive tongue that is part of it that we'll put in once we have everything painted uh, and ready to go before we assemble it. So that's just something to keep in mind. However, before we get into the fine details, yuck, yuck, of this miniature, Lauren, what's Hi. the story with this week for game stuff for Idle Champions? I'm sorry. I, I also got very distracted because you're like, it's it, there's this massive tongue. And, and all I could think about was, you know, tongue sold separately. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue actually comes with the massive outhouse mimic. Okay, so in the world of Idol Champions, uh, we've got a new champion that just came out on Wednesday, Valentine from the Black Dice Society. Mm -hmm. If you haven't had a chance to load up your game and go check out uh, the event that's going on now, the, the yay, yes. uh, uh, that is the new Black Dice Society champion. There's been a bunch of them recently, so hey, collect them all. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I. And then we also don't... have, well, there's the dark Valentine skin too. Yeah. That. I'm trying to think this is, we've had a lot of uh, announcements in the last couple yeah. of weeks and a lot of things. And this is kind of a, a slightly more calm week. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is just a, it, a normal everyday. All about Valentine week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're just having a little bit of fun yeah. and having a little bit of fun with tentacle kitty. So exactly. there you go. Exactly. Treat them. All right, speaking of tentacle kitties, uh, Hemingway has decided he's gonna hang out with us. So forewarning, you'll be seeing, you know, paws and ears and whiskers for sure. Um, oh yeah. And see? also, and I, I, this is the other thing I, I always forget. I don't know why. Uh, Martin is our wonderful moderator Yay! in chat today. So if you do have any questions for us about mini painting, about cats, about mimics, about idol champions, go ahead and put those in chat with question in big capital letters at the front, because every once in a while, I'm going to be uh, focusing on a tongue and I might miss your question in chat, but Martin will snatch it and yeah. put it into a little backstage document so that we can answer it later. So uh, in fact, I'm going to make that document slightly bigger and say, hi, Martin. Hi, Martin. <laughs> there you go. Behind the scenes. Yay. So, yeah. Okay. So. If you are new with us and you haven't encountered WizKids Minis yet, there is an important step with miniature painting that we don't need to worry about when you use WizKids Minis because they come primed ahead of time. So we don't have to worry about priming this. This is all set and ready to go with painting. You may pop this out of the blister and find out that you might want to work on some mold lines. If that's the case, you can very easily just take a mold line remover like this one here that I have from Citadel. And it basically is just something that goes along and glides and removes any massive mold lines that might pop up. If you really get into it though, you may have to touch up prime those areas depending on how much you've removed uh, the raised plastic bits from the mold lines of the, you know, basically when they're creating the miniatures. Uh, but really these are meant to take out of the package and start to paint right away. And again, the door functions, which I think is always ever so much fun. And you have this lovely face. All those teeth. <laughs> all the teethers and all the eyes. Uh, so many the teeth. Size, yes, this this is this is a decent size mini too. This is a large, and let me show you. You actually have a medium one right here, so you can see, you know, pretty much to scale, which works out nicely. So what we're gonna do today is work on having the base paint colors go onto this, which means we're gonna get started with some Vallejo paints that we have on hand. If you don't have Vallejo paints, that's okay. You don't have to use Vallejo paints. You can use your other hobby paints of your choice, whether it's things like Citadel Army Painter or there's a few other ones that my brain just went like, nope, you're not going to remember them right now. Um, or other paints that you may or other enjoy. paints, dot, dot, dot. Uh, yeah. Those are definitely options, as are those craft paints that you can find at Michael's and other such craft stores, um, especially if you're just getting into miniature painting. What I will do is try to give you uh, generic, no, honey, give you generic, 
<laughs> paint terms to help you if you don't have the Vallejo paints themselves. Um, and yes, if you're just joining us, this is Hemi. He's my little polydactyl Maine Coon. Mm -hmm. Objects are not larger than they appear. He is a large cat. <laughs> <laughs> if you are just joining us, Paint and Slay is usually a relatively calm mm -hmm. uh, show in where we, we paint, and now we've got an extra calm kitty. So Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be I, good to go. I'm, I'm just here for the kitty love, and then it's also every once in a while, the kitty being like, and my mimic. And my mimic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're going to start first with going to make a dark purple. Uh, we've done this before in the past. So what we're going to do is take bloody red, which is essentially Vallejo's version of a classic red. So just that nice, bright fire engine red, your primary red tone in basic paints. And you'll also want ultramarine blue, which also is your primary blue. It's a classic blue. We're gonna take that and you're also gonna want a touch of black. So we can make this a darker purple is the plan. So to make this, we're gonna start off with equal parts blue and red. And then we will add the black in because I want to get the color purple established first before we start darkening the purple because otherwise it may be like, oh, I'm at the perfect color. You mix a little more and then it's, oh, wait. <laughs> the, Whoopsie. It yeah. got away from me. Um, so you can use either a paper plate for this if you have a paper plate. I have a wet palette, which is also something that you can use if you're more into the mini painting hobby. That works too. Purpose of a wet palette is to keep your paints wet while you're working between sessions of painting is really what happens there. So I'm going to do a couple drops of blue and then a couple drops of red, mix those together. And then I'll add in the black and I'll give a swatch of the color once I have it mixed. Yeah, I'm working on mine. Uh, it's a pretty dark purple that I'm getting. Is maybe I, I put in, I might've put in maybe too much blue. I thought I'd if equal parts. If you feel but it is a nice deep purple, then I mean, remember your mini, your colors. If you feel comfortable with that as your dark purple, then go for it. That's true. Let's, let's take a, let's take a look. How's my yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, do the classic just a little dot. I'm gonna do a little dot of black to deepen it just a bit because mine has a touch of a pastel feel to it. Oh no, mine's mine's okay. pretty dark. I'm so gonna if yours stick is pretty with dark, then just stick with what you feel comfortable with and go with your gut. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Tim No says, that's an ouch house. Yes. No, you're not helping mix the paint. Uh, and there, there's your answer. I just saw that gray L shaped was asking, does the cat paint too? The answer is no, 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 <laughs> no. He wants to help. He tries to help. Mm -hmm. Say hi. He's Henry. just being cute. He's helping me while I'm mixing this paint. <laughs> Be cute on the camera. I mean, there's nothing yeah. wrong with a little bit of cute. No. Once again, it's Friday. It is Friday. It's Friday. All right. And so this is the color of our outside of our outhouse. Yes. Actually, not the outside. This is going to be the inside of our outhouse. Oh, inside. Yes, oh, okay. Because cool. we are going to put this. Um, you know, it's funny. I told you what size brushes to get out. And then I think in my getting prepped up for the stream, I put all my brushes away. <laughs> you were so good about putting like, everything away. Okay, And then I gave them, so I put them away. Um, so we're actually going to paint the inside of the outhouse. What we're going to paint of the outhouse. This is going to be fun. Uh, we're going to paint basically what functions as like the inside of the mouth. Um, so the soft and soft palate, hard palate, the back of the throat, the gum line. And well, I mean, we have the eyes floating around in here, but that will still also get the purple treatment. So we're going to put all of that on the inside of the outhouse. That's just, I'm sorry. That's just going to tickle my funny bone and it's, the tongue. But it's accurate, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to get started. And actually, if you need to, also you can thin your paint, which mine is a little bit thicker than I want. So I will thin it. Yeah, Don't I might do, do that. I might do that as well. Watch Hemi become my Emmanuel today. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't, Don't do, do it. it. I'm, I'm glad that I saw a bunch of those uh, oh my God. because I am not They're on darling. TikTok myself, but fortunately I, I show a lot up. of people who are and they, they're they very kind and they just put yeah. put stuff on, say, Twitter where yeah. I am. And so I get to keep up with Emmanuel and uh, all of the well, fun. Emmanuel's that... on Twitter now too. Have you seen that? No, that yes, I have not. She has an account and she will post those on to Twitter as well. Well, wait, let me ask. 
is it Emmanuel or is it the, the it's, very it's, nice it's farmer the, lady? It's the farmer who, lady who's like, Emmanuel, okay. don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't do, do it. it. I'm impressed with, uh, first off, how quickly she says that, because uh, mm -hmm. this must be the kind of thing that happens a lot. Yeah. And also, Lee, also, how much that, that I think it's an emu? Yes. How much that creature listens. Right? Like, she starts to say, don't do it, and it just freezes. It's like, well, I, um, oh, and you'll see there's this slab of wood right here. Mm -hmm. Still paint that purple, because we'll go back over with the browns. It'll just be easier than trying to play the back and forth game because this is such a funky angle in here. Yeah. Um, but do not paint the seat. So you can see there's this wooden seat on the inside. Mm. We are not going to paint that purple. I, I might have already painted some of that purple. Well, if you okay. painted that already purple, then we're okay. You can work with it. Yeah, yeah, it's you okay. It'll just it. be a, a little bit of a purple seat. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so while we are getting the purple on, how's the chat been with questions? Uh, let me find out. I got so excited about this purple. Right. Um, the lurking writer wants to know, will you give the outhouse mimic a flushed tint to its skin? <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, Leaf SA says, Kitty should get its own camera and box. A very important part of the stream. You know, I don't think I can handle a third. <laughs> There is already a lot that V has to do to prep yeah. for this stream. Um, so I'd hate to ask her to be like, third camera. But this is where Jason Charles Miller has just spoiled us all. Because if you watch any of his streams, like um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, when he does request shows, mm -hmm. he now has a doggy cam. Yeah. And it's wonderful. It's lovely. And so now I feel like everybody who has a pet, pet it's like, pet well, cam? <laughs> pet cam time but you know that's a lot of work if it were just the two of us and i had like the one camera already i could rig something but essentially we have a kitty mini cam because this is the second camera going on here yeah third third camera could be third, a third little... camera might make my computer start to um get interesting <laughs> also also we just wouldn't have enough real estate it would be um yeah we we want to see yeah. the minis i mean we also yeah. want to see the kitty so right now it's just we get to see both why not yeah. i mean hemi's working with us so it's two for one <laughs> literally two go. for one <laughs> um vin mist asked i asked during mars's guiding hand but i missed the answer but lauren you're probably an expert i mean probably not as much of an expert as mars is but let me try when doing a patron free play, how do the currencies stack up? Is it by stage or by influence? I.e. if I farm at a wall, will I continue earning rubies? Um, so you can do th that kind of influence farming. I would suggest not doing it, though, because unlike when you are just playing a regular free play without the patron, as you keep playing, you'll just keep earning influence. Whereas the patrons, eventually there is a cap to the amount you can earn per week of uh, influence. So eventually you just will stop earning influence. So I would not sit and farm. I would go do something else or or try one of the adventure variants because um, those will not only give you influence, but those will give you the actual coins so that or the currency that lets you uh, buy things like the perks that each of the uh, each of the patrons have, and those are very important. So that is that is my suggestion. Um, I don't know what Mars said, but I'm sure he said something intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> um, Magic Wand wants to know how often does the kitty end up with Vallejo highlights? Never. <laughs> I think there may have been one time when he was a kitten um, that he got into one of my paper plates, mm. but he's actually, he's a pretty good cat. He's a very dog-like cat. Like he knows commands and tricks and everything like that. Um, so I've, I've trained him where it's like, he knows this is okay, but he doesn't try and go over to where my paints are and play with them at least. So that helps. Which is good because nobody wants... Um to follow kitty tracks in their own house. <laughs> no. Rory's the one I have to watch a little bit more because she will get feisty. Just mm. because that is, that's her. She's just, you know, she and Valentine would get along famously, quite frankly. <laughs> there you go. You tell me no, try me. I'm going to try it anyways. 
Okay, yep, so I'm doing the best I can to get the purple on the upper hard palette area. There are some tricky angles, I will say that. So do the best yeah. you can. And same thing going on here with the mouth at the bottom. Yeah, I feel like I have I've done as well as I can on the soft palette without having one of those brushes that have an angle to them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you get a little bit on the wood, that's okay, because we're going to go back over with the brown after we're done with the purples. So I'm not too concerned. And also, like, mm. totally okay to get purple on the teeth. There's no way you're going to make these teeth pristine with all these little angles we have to hit. Yeah. So I'm not going to fuss budget that one. I'm also trying to keep the camera on the mini, but <laughs> there are some interesting angles I'm trying to hit right now, so... And and you have uh, a cat. I mean, you've got a lot it's going on It's actually becoming, there. like, a nice little hand rest for me right now. So I'm kind of like, oh, nice. Thank you. Extra support. <laughs> Usually that means the cat leaves because the instant mm. the cat becomes more than just uh, enjoyable to watch but actually useful, that's usually when they're like, "Oh, you need yeah. me? Goodbye." Yeah, but that's just it. Hemi's not your usual cat. He's not your yeah. average kitty. So I'm not surprised he's just kind of chilling out with us like this. Ah, and uh, Magic Wand is saying, uh, "Thanks, Lauren." Was going to ask if they make angled brushes. I don't have one, but I do know that they exist. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about angled brushes? Yeah, angled brushes are basically <laughs> you can make your own. FYI, an angled brush. Oh, is this a Whisk Kids one? Ooh, we could do a live demonstration. Ooh, I have so many from the Whisk Kids paint kits. I'm not bashing them. I'm simply saying it's like, oh, this is expendable because I have ten more like it. Mm -hmm. um so let me finish painting this and i'll show you how to diy an angled brush for yourself Ooh, that's good because i also yeah. have a lot of the brushes from the the paint night kits that we've been doing because yeah. we did the, the chimera but then you did a whole series yeah. of them yes. that i enjoyed doing as well and so i have a lot of those brushes so that'd yeah. be awesome yeah so let me just get this on here and yeah i'm working on these these gums myself Gummy, gummy, gummy. Oh, but yeah, that is definitely where an angled brush yeah. would come on in. And it is literally what everybody, what, what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. It's just a brush with an yep. angle. But yeah, oof, getting up in that soft palette would be nice. Yeah. So basically what happens here is you'll see angled brushes. And oftentimes it's a matter of they have taken this um, barrel of the paintbrush. And I have, this is just jewelry pliers, which, hi, buddy. Um, which work for a lot of mini painting things. I will say that. So all you do is you just pinch the barrel. You can help have your thumb and point your finger holding the meeting point between the handle and the metal. And then you just bend mm. the paintbrush and you get an angled paintbrush. So now I can go in and do a demonstration. And I get, yeah. So you just dip it in the paint like you normally would. And what this does is make it so you can reach tricky angles a little bit more. I will have to do that this weekend yeah. when I have, because I have easy access to all of those paintbrushes. Yeah. I don't have easy access to a pair of pliers. So, so yep. I, so. I, but I do, I have easy access, but not uh, on stream access. Let me put it that yeah. way. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's different when it's like not right there for you, but it is in the house. Yeah, I'd have to go to the kitchen, which once again, super easy, mm -hmm. but uh, not on stream. So yeah, that's how you can make a DIY angled brush or you can buy angled brushes as well, if you'd rather. Um, these I think are two bucks at a craft store mm. and those angled brush packs can be, you know, six bucks. <laughs> just saying. So yeah, yep. just keep that in mind. All right, so that is the, the outside now, the inside, I'm going to do this all day. The inside of the outhouse is painted. Now I'm going to use that same purple and take it onto the tongue as well. Taking it to the tongue. Da, 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> hey, Robo Goblin. Welcome hey, on. Welcome, welcome to um, painting and kitties. Yes. <laughs> The it's not painting in owl bears. Sorry, but it is painting in kitties. Actually, that's funny because um, we call this fellow our owl bear because he looks I, like one. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, he's my little owl bear. Not so little. Can I paint? Okay, put nope. your head down. Put your head down. Nope. Put your head down. Stay down. Thank you. <laughs> Stay down. Thank you. Good boy. He just wants to lick the tongue. Oh boy. Do you know where this tongue has been? Between um, Helen and the outhouse? I don't think so. <laughs> 
I thought you were talking about your cat's tongue for a moment. I'm like, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I have not. No, we don't do that. Thank you. But I did just open this package uh, today for the Outhouse Mimic, so I, I do know where this tongue has been. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I'm all good. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, we've basically just, I've put the tongue into putty because there's this post to lock it and uh, attach to the rest of the mini. And I'm using that to my advantage. So I don't have to, again, things I never thought I'd have to say on stream, have to hold the tongue while painting it. Learn to stream a D&D stream. Mm -hmm. Say things in front of an audience you never thought you'd say. Yep. And just keep going and not get mortified by it because... Nope. Just the way it's, it is, folks. <laughs> it's incredibly accurate. We're painting a tongue purple. Yep. You got to hold that tongue. Yep. Hold your tongue. That's a, that's a song. You got to hold your tongue. You got to hold that tongue. That might actually be a D&D &D song. Who knows? Right. We shall see. Now, I didn't thin my paints down for the inside of the outhouse, mm -hmm. but I did thin it down a little bit for the With tongue. the tongue and its texture, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah. I had I started to in general because my... My red is getting thicker, especially with the heat. Oh, that is a good, good point. Yeah. I never, you've talked about how, depending on temperature and humidity and mm -hmm. altitude and all that, the paints will react differently. Yep. But I, I also forgot that when we started the show, it was winter. Yeah. Well, it was fall. Yeah. It was, well, it was like getting to be cooler, crisper, sweater weather. Yeah. And now it is summer. Yep. My paints have been through the seasons. I mean, this is how I know it's a hot summer day for me. And plus my computer is near me and it's cranking out these waves of heat. This is already drying, even though I've only just got to the tip of the tongue. So yeah. my room is definitely hotter and you'll find things dry faster in the heat. Um, as long as you don't have a high humidity. Like if you were painting in Florida, you might need a little bit more dry time. Cause you know, when that humidity count gets up, yoy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The couple of years I lived in Florida, it was, that was a lot of humidity. Yeah. That was bad. Yep. I mean, okay. some people love it. Yeah. I mean, why not? Do, do, do. But what I'm do not an do? outdoor child, so. I was, but now I'm, I'm very much the, I'm good if it's like between 75 to 85 degrees. Mm. That's my happy point. That's my happy point. I'll be outside and enjoying that and just relaxing. I'm about 10 degrees cooler 65 to 75 i am super happy there the rest eh, we'll deal yeah, we'll deal yeah. with it we'll also yes magic wand step one put your tongue in putty <laughs> <laughs> all right i have i have completed my tongue yay okay so what we're gonna do now mm -hmm. is hold on i'm reading through my notes again also, um, I, I will go back to the questions that Martin grabbed, but Lex the cat says, the Hemingway Museum kitties are all polydactyl, assuming that's where the kitty got their name. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. You are 100% correct. Yep. The second I saw his feet. Well, Hemingway has a story. Hemingway was a foster fail. I used to work for an animal rescue group, and I brought in the litter that Hemingway was a part of. It was um, three Maine Coon mixes and then two classic tabbies. Um, which that can happen with mama cats, believe it or not, two different papas. Um, so the main coon mixes, I took on the three of them and then the tabby cats pretty much already had a home slotted for them right away. Um, just cause they were stinking adorable and sweet. Um, so Hemingway, his brother and his sister, um, were these, just these gray fluff balls. And the second I saw his feet, I'm like, okay, you're Hemingway. Cause he's the only polydactyl from the mix of the mm. brother and the sisters or the brothers and the sisters set. Um, and then what happened was, uh, his brother, I named him cotton cause he felt like a cotton ball and the sister I named cloud because she was so fluffy. Um, and then cotton and Hemingway stayed with me and they were a bonded pair, which means they just love up each other. They don't want to be separated, everything like that. And pretty much did not give them up from fostering because they just fit in so well with our family and they're such sweethearts Aww. as you can see right here. So that's Hemingway's little backstory. So I, I think I only knew a little bit of that. Yeah. So thank you for telling us. You're welcome. So what we're going to do is we're still going to go back to ultramarine and bloody red, but we're going to change the equation. We're going to do heavier on the bloody red. 
again, phrasing is so much fun, and do a touch of ultramarine blue because we want a more reddish purple for this part. Okay. As opposed to a deep, dark purple. And, and I'll, I'll swatch the two next to each other so you can see the difference. Yeah. And what's uh, what are we using this for? Because I'm also trying to gauge amounts for it's like... It's going to be going on to the tip of the tongue and then feathering back to the base of the tongue. And then we're also going to use this do -do 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 around the outer gum areas and the eyeball areas. Okay. Okay. So not too much. I'm just not trying to gauge... Much. We're going to do a little bit of um, overbrushing, not like a full-on painting, everything like we just did, but we're going to be using it to start doing some some highlighting work without it doing a dry brush if that matters okay. what i mean in a second and that's where we'll want to take on the detail brush that i had mentioned um, yeah so yeah and, and the the main reason i'm asking is because i'm using the paper plate mm -hmm. which is 100 percent fine but it does oh, yeah. mean my paint will eventually dry yeah, out yeah. and not be usable yeah and so i'm trying to be careful so that i don't run out of paint and have to remix yeah. because that's a recipe for a oh, whoopsie that's it, a recipe for two different really, colors it really really is for an oopsie daisies yeah all right so much more red than blue yeah so i'm gonna swatch these side by side so you can see the difference okay so this is the color i just mixed Okay. Oh yeah, that's almost a maroon. Yeah. And then let me show you against the other color that we were previously using. So you can get tonal. Okay. Reference. Yeah, much Yeah. Much more red, much much lighter. Yeah. Uh oh, I just saw a question. Uh the polydactyl is a genetic mutation. But it is basically passed along through the gene lines at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to my little detail brush here and going in with that brighter red. I'm actually gonna start with the outhouse first to give the time, the time, the tongue some time to dry. That's what we want. That makes sense. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna go in here with a detail brush and I'm gonna keep this as I blot on my hand like I tend to do. I'm going to edge around the gum line like so and basically try and hit the raised portions of the details, which will make a lot more sense once I show you an example when I get like, the areas done. Uh, meanwhile, CF2 says the cat tries to help, but it usually turns into a catastrophe. <laughs> Very good. Very nice. Yes, we're, we're here for all of your cat related puns. Yep. Um, and Warren Valhalla has a uh, Idol Champions game. Should I blow all my blacksmithing contracts to open patrons earlier? Um, use your blacksmithing contracts on uh, now in order to play more of the event. Because when you use, or not blacksmithing contracts, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Blacksmithing contracts, make sure you only use those on event champions. Don't use them on your um, your main champions, your evergreens and the, the 11 that you get, because you will constantly be getting gear for those champions in just regular chests. So um, if you want to use your blacksmithing contracts right now in order to get your champions geared up, that's fine. That's great. Just make sure you're only using them on event champions because that's going to be much more advantageous for you. Mm -hmm. And Earl Grey Malkin, to get back to mini talk, um, wants to know where do you get these minis? You can get these minis in a few places, actually. First of all, I'm always going to say check out your FLGS, your friendly local game store. Hopefully they have that F for you. Um, <laughs> some people say LGS instead, just local game store, but I like the friendly. Uh, so check with them and see if they carry that. Uh, if they do not, or if you don't have a local game store near you, you can always go to dndmini.com. That is WizKids shop that is exclusively D&D Knowles' Marvelous Miniatures, which is what this line, this is from, that particular line. Uh, so you could check there. You could also just go to shop.wizkids.com and check out their selection of unpainted miniatures. They also call them UPM if you want lingo. Uh, but yeah, local game stores and online are usually your best bet. Uh, if for some reason you're not having luck on those resources, you can also check out places like Miniature Market online. 
they mm -hmm. usually have a good selection of miniatures as well. Like if something is out of stock in one place, you can go to Miniature Market and sometimes they might have it instead. Sorry, I'm trying to feather and apparently that means I have to get quiet. Yeah, because it's a concentration <laughs> thing. I've also put my lighting in a different spot, so I'm I'm also yeah. getting used to where my lighting is and everything. Mm -hmm. Because, fair. you know, always trying to make it better. That is absolutely fair. Uh, the lurking writer wants to know, oh, okay, so this is a question for, uh, <laughs> this is a question for me for the sketching hour because, or no, uh, chimeras, sorry. We also had some chimera things happen on sketching uh, hour. Yeah, yeah. Um, they want to know, did you settle on names for each of your chimeras and their respective heads? Uh, I, Nook, Crook, and Nanny. Nanny was the goat. Crook, I think, was the dragon. And Nook, the lion. Yeah. Is what I went with. I honestly don't remember what I went with. I'm having one of those brain days and where I'm, I'm focused on other things at the moment. And that, that is I don't totally remember. Fair. Yeah. I mean, really. But I'm still pretty proud of how those wings came out. I'm, yeah, the wings I'm really I'm happy so with that. happy that that plotted out as I had planned in my head. And for the gums, so back to painting. So for the gums on the top, uh, with this feathering, you're mm -hmm. going, you're not doing the eyes, but you're kind of going around? I'm or going around the eyes. I'm going around okay. the eyes. I'm basically focusing on the higher points that are popping up. Okay. And adding this brighter red tone to that leaving the perp more recessed areas the darker purple is what's going on there ah okay yeah that makes sense yeah okay so that takes care and let me see here i may even have a little fun and go into the back of the throat here Ooh. and get those just the along the sides kind of thing? Yeah, just like those raised ridges. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go in and give that a touch of this. Just for some visual interest. Might as well, right, Hemi? What do you think? Right, Kitty? You agree? You got your happy <gasps> feet? Happy Vin feet. Mist. Uh, I would roll a concentration check, but I'm too busy concentrating. Ah. Ah. It's a good concentration it though. Is. Like it's 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 like we talk about the the zen type of concentration, mm -hmm. especially since it is something that it's fun to do and then it's also just like you can't really mess it up. Yeah. Cuz it's just painting a mini. Yeah. You're just having fun painting a mini, so like if if I do a whoopsie like oh, I painted the the toilet seat when I wasn't supposed to paint the toilet seat. Right. Eh. It's okay. Yeah. It's exactly. all good. It works out in the wash. In the wash. Mm-hmm. Kind of wish oh, the yeah. door popped off. I mean, I know it does accidentally because mine oh, did. Oopsie. But and and so I clicked it back in. Yeah. Um, I was gonna ask about. I figured if it if it's supposed to pop off intentionally, you would say something. Yeah. yeah. And since you didn't, I'm like. Okay. All right. It's, yeah, it's, I don't think it's I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. When I was uh, pulling the tongue out, the door kind of came with it. Okay. And, and then it went, oh, okay. but it does pop back in. And, and as you can see with my door, it, it seems to be working perfectly well mm -hmm. now. So, but I don't want to tempt door fate. Ah. You know, you know how difficult doors can be. Ah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Where did I put the tongue? There's the tongue. And you said we're doing like the tip of the tongue? Mm-hmm. The tip of the tongue and then sort of bring it. Hold on, I have to remind myself. What's the top of the tongue? Okay, so if you're looking at the tongue, you want it to be an S shape. Mm -hmm. That's the top of the tongue here. Okay. This I beg pardon. <laughs> <laughs> my tongue, my tongue. <laughs> this more ridged area. That is definitely, what are you doing? That is definitely the bottom of the tongue. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start with Hemingway letting go of my hand. Mm. And then 
adding this to the tip of the tongue. And then I'm gonna bring it up the sides a little bit here. Yeah, I'm just watching to see how far you're going. I'm gonna take it so it feathers up to about the top of the S curve. Okay. So it's gonna be more of this red tone at the tip. And then pulling this almost like a dry brush motion as I feather up the tongue. And just there. the top and the sides. Yeah, but then I'm gonna take this around the side entirely. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, and an evil oh, turnip it? tea has a, a mimic story. Uh, a few weeks ago, I ran a module that had a teleport trap into a pit of snakes with a convenient ladder Ooh. that turned out to be a mimic. Later Ooh. on, a huge pile of treasure that happened to be a mimic. The rogue in the game has a sword that he thinks is a sentient weapon, but he's not realized yet it's a vampiric mimic pretending to be a sword. Oh my goodness. And at some point, uh, your rogue is going to use their mimic sword to attack a mimic and mm -hmm. and then the mimics are going to have to have a conversation yep <laughs> now what i'm doing is um i'm also running this red on these ridged portions on the underside of the tongue ah yeah again to kind of bring out a little bit more detail yeah i was just watching this morning the video that wizards of the coast put out mm -hmm. that's the um it's basically going over all the different monsters that were in the D and D movie trailer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and cool. which is, I think, it's a really good video for people who are either uh, new to D and D mm -hmm. or, um, you know, know about D and D but maybe haven't played recently, and right. so a lot of these monsters are new to them uh, because they go over them in in pretty good detail oh, and like nice. how classic. A bunch of them are and why it's so exciting to see like the owl bear and the mimic and all those things um and they definitely got talking about how if you throw in too many mimics uh your your party starts mm -hmm. to get very very paranoid mm -hmm. so you do have to balance out mimics you know because the last thing you want with, with any traps really but mimics yeah. in you know are kind of the <laughs> they're kind of the thing that if you throw too many at them, I'm always worried that then the players start to go, well, I'm just going to hit everything with my sword now. Mm -hmm. Everything <laughs> I'm not is, going anywhere. Everything's a target. Everything, you know, oh, you want us to go through this dungeon? Well, nope. I guess I'm hitting every wall with a sword. Yep. And you know what? You want them to be smart, but you don't want them to be too paranoid. paranoid. <laughs> yeah. This is between because smart you, and paranoid. Yeah, you want them you want them to have fun too and eventually yeah. it's like no you just don't need to hit the door anymore it's okay yeah. so here you can see the tongue is now it's got the purple on it as the base color and then that more reddish purple on the details a little bit more on those ridges and it gives, it gives it a little bit more definition yeah which we like which we want mm -hmm. so that takes care of that particular color now we still have, do you still have a good amount of this brighter red? Um, <laughs> depends on how much is a good amount. Uh, enough so that you can dry brush if we add a little bit of dead white into it. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, dry so brushing, we're gonna yes. do, we're gonna take a little bit of dead white. Not a huge amount, I'll mix this up again so you can see the color difference. So I'm gonna bring dead white into the mix, quite literally. Doing just a little dot, a little dab should hopefully do. A little dab will do ya. Exactly. I am you, Sophie. Yeah, you slip. And I'm going for a lighter oh. version of this color. Welcome to painting in cat time. Yeah. Here on uh, see any games with you know so your your hosts. We're just gonna quietly yeah. talk to just, you like we're yeah. on NPR. Yes. Soft and now I'll stop. Warm kitty, little ball of fur, happy kitty, oh. sleepy kitty, purr, purr, purr. <laughs> it's now <laughs> nap time here on CD Games. <laughs> Everybody, curl up and let your your formations run for a little while. It's going to be okay. Yeah. They're they're going to be fine without you. It'll be wonderful. Get your and... juice box. Grab your snack. Grab your blanket. Yeah. Don't forget that. 
Absolutely. Open the window a little bit if you if you need a little bit of air. Put put up open the window and mm -hmm. curl up and join us for painting and cats. There we go. Okay. So I I've want just... it to be raised to that tone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like a pretty good pink. Yeah. I think I got there. Yeah. And I I guess I need a dry brush. <laughs> ah, paint okay. lurking writer just called it paint and stray. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, oh, buddy. Hi, honey. Okay. All right. So we're going to take those dry brushes. Yeah. And get it onto the dry brush and pull off the excess like a soap. And then, no, not Helen, the outhouse. And then we're going to dry brush the gums and the mm. inside. You can see now it gives this really nice gummy look. <laughs> the gummiest of looks. Yes. And do the same thing where the eyeball grouping is. Dry brush up there. Yeah, this this pink is definitely uh, gum tones. Yeah. But because we've done the purples and everything underneath, you get a better depth to everything as opposed to just a flat color. Oh, yeah. And then you said also the inside of the mouth? Mm-hmm. So see, just a little bit more visual interest that way. Yeah. Oh, Engines Wild asks, question, any ideas or tips on painting minis if your hands shake? Ooh, good question. That is a good question. It's a question that I've actually encountered before. Um, the way I'm painting right now is I'm holding out my minis um, underneath the camera. Um, but if it's a matter of your hands are shaky and for various reasons, it can happen. I mean, it happens to me when my hypoglycemia kicks in because I'm being stubborn and not stopping to eat. Don't do that. Don't do as I do. Um, eat and drink eat and drink <laughs> if that's your reason why you're shaking but for other reasons why you might be shaking whether it's um fatigue uh you tire out quickly things like that that absolutely does happen what you can do is you can bring your arms in closer and lock your elbows against your rib cage okay so kind of like i'm going like what so lock your elbows i just realized in. we're wearing the same shirt just hey on. cool and <laughs> we're good little employees and Yay. then you bring your mini into you closer as if you are praying. So your mini is going to be closer to your body as like I'm painting it. So things are held out like this, but just bringing things in closer to your body and tighter to your body and using points of connection between your hands, steepling. So like I'll steeple my pinkies against my dominant hand, and that should give you some more control and a steadier hold on your minis. It definitely helps. And frankly, I'm basically doing that all the time mm -hmm. because I don't have the nice camera to show off my minis. So I'm just doing what I need to do in order to paint. And so you can't see it, but I'm, I literally just paint like this. I, that's what I do. And part of it is just for the stability of it. And part of it is so that it stays nice and close to my face without me hunching over to it. Yeah. Um, that is something I learned as, as a professional musician making oboe reads the idea of bring the things to your to face you. if yeah. you need to see them instead of you going to the things because that that helps your back and your neck yeah and i'm not always good at it but i try yeah i kind of have the exception to the rule because between my face and my mini is the camera and sometimes i yeah. can't where are you going sir no, you're no, you're no, in no. a you've got a very specific situation going yeah. on though yeah i just don't want people to think like oh i should paint with everything held out like no if you can bring it in closer the closer is truly better for you yeah and then also yes uh please remember to eat and drink please yes, have yes, water yes, on yes. hand in a cup that is nothing yep. like the water you are using for your paint nope. so that you don't grab the wrong thing or put your brush in the wrong thing been there done that it's an interesting flavor yep for sure I mean, yep yeah, that's very <laughs> Hold on, I have three characters. Okay, so that is the outhouse done. And I'm going to do a similar thing with the tongue. I'm going to dry brush the tongue at this point. All right. I'm going to start at the tip of the tongue and pull up. 
and around. And are we doing the whole tongue mm -hmm. with this? The whole tongue. Awesome. The whole thing. You'll definitely have to move this around a lot to get to the different angles, but it'll be worth it. The lurking writer says, and sometimes cat is a way of describing this show, D and D, or life in general. True. It's just is we do this, and sometimes with cat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that literally is my life. <laughs> my life with sometimes with cat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, oh, nope, nope, don't come out. Oh, whoops. <laughs> oh, is it fighting you a little bit? I, I, it was coming off of the putty. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, I'm kind of dancing along that fine line myself. Yeah, I was trying to make sure when I put the tongue in the putty that I didn't sink it in too far so that mm -hmm. I'd have basically the, the ring around the bottom. Right. But that also means that it's not necessarily yeah. uh, perfectly... Uh, tread lightly. <laughs> yeah. Tread lightly around brushing a tongue. Yeah, that's fair. Hmm. Three out of four dentists would agree. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Oh, Vin Mist wants to know, are we starting the Discord drinking game early? I mean, <sighs> we, can. we can. The fact that I haven't mentioned the Discord up I'm, until this I'm point impressed. is... I am, yeah, yeah. Honestly. I've usually mentioned it five or six times. But since you ask, A, if you would like to learn more about painting minis, uh, or if you just want to learn more about Idle Champions and come to a really great community, come to our Discord and drop your paper towel. Discord.gg slash Idle Champions, where we have not only a bunch of wonderful people who will help you with your Idle Champions questions when, you know, there isn't a stream going on, or when there is, uh, you can also find a channel specifically for Paint and Slay, where I post what you'll need in order to join us on future paints. Oh. And now I'm going to pick up my paper towel. Yes, do. Okay, there so that takes care of the popples. Why bubbles? The popples. All right. <laughs> Turning my plate in a new direction to get to a new spot. Yes. Okay. Now let me see here. How are you feeling about doing some detail work with the eyes? I mean, hey, well, aye, I'm aye, here for aye. whatever you want to do. Okay. Let's get the eyes going. We're going to go for a classic yellow, which is called sun yellow from Vallejo. Mm -hmm. Your bright, cheery cardinal yellow. Not cardinal. Canary yellow. Cardinal red. <laughs> That's the other one. Canary yellow. All right. Do, 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 do. I haven't used this one a little bit. So shake your paints. Don't forget to shake your paints if it's been a while. Um, yeah. Because those pigments and the oils like to separate a little bit. I've just gotten into the, the habit of shaking it as soon as yeah. I pick it up. It's just shake, easier that way. Shake, sonora, shake, you know, the tongue. That's all you get. Yeah. I don't want to get dinged. No dinging. All right. Are we mixing this or is it just straight, straight yellow? Straight yellow. Nice. Straight sun yellow. <laughs> I rinsed my brush, okay? I always tip with my tongue. It's just the thing I do. So you can see it's we okay. have, let me count. One, ah, 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 two, three, four. Four eyeballs. Okay. Yes. I'm just going to go in my little detail brush. And I'm just going to watch. Deciding which one I want to start with. I'll go for the corner. And just carefully paint that eye in. And the reason I saved the eyes for last is because I didn't want this to get caught in the dry brushing because then they're just going to turn into pink eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not necessarily a bad thing, but not what we want. Yeah. I mean, mimics are already horrific enough. We don't also have to think about pink eye. Yeah. I got a little, little stray bit. If you ever get a stray bit, just take a clean brush that has some water on it and you can wipe away the oopsie daisy really quick like I just did. Uh, yeah, do, 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 do. do that in a second. Yeah. Is it better to shake or stir your paints? You want to agitate your paints to make every make sure everything mixes together. Stirring your paint is great for mixing colors together, but if it's an actual solid paint lurking writer, you want to agitate, so shake your paints.
Oh, yeah, I should mention uh, once again, since we do have some new people who've come into the mm. chat, if you do have any questions for us about idol champions or painting or uh, cats, go ahead and put question in big capital letters into the chat because we have the amazing Martin on hand to grab those so that when I am a little too busy dotting eyeballs with paint, I don't miss your question because eyeballs need paint. And I can't look at the chat at the same time I'm doing yeah, this. That is a very tricky thing to do. Eyeballs and chat watching. So yeah. You, well, I mean, you do watch the chat with your eyes, but when you're dealing with someone else's eyeballs, it's a different story. So yeah. there we have the four yellow eyes. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Now we're going to shift over to mixing again. And I need... Beastie brown, orange, okay. and black. We're going to aim for a darker brown color is what we're doing for the wood. So Beastie brown. Where is my Beastie brown, orange, and black. Yeah. Okay. So orange is a classic orange. The orange fire is a classic orange tone for those of you using more generic paint colors. Um, so this is going to be a heavier mix of Beastie brown, then bring in your orange, and then bring in a touch of black to aim for a dark brown. Okay. That's what we want to do with this one. And it's a dark, and warm brown because we're adding that orange in. Ah. So, and what's this going to be for? This is going to be for the wood. So you actually do want a good amount of this. All right. Oh, my beastie brown is just so... Ugh. This bottle is just a mess. Mm -hmm. I was just noticing. I'm like, I need to, after later, remember to wipe the tips of my bottles. It's just the the browns. Everything mm -hmm. else, if I close up nicely, no problems. But yeah. the, ugh, browns. Ugh, browns. Ugh, browns. Ugh, browns. Ugh, browns. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mix orange and uh, brown together first and then bring in black to the mix. And how many sure. parts brown to orange? I did uh, easily three parts brown to... Uh, like a part and a half of orange. Okay. So it is currently for me, this color. Ah, all right. Okay. And now I'm going to add black to the mix. If it'll stop blowing bubbles. There we go. So I'm starting with just a dot of black to this and see where it brings me. I think I need a little bit more orange. And if you want to give it more of like a mahogany type of look, you could add a touch of red too. And you're really getting some interesting color schemes. All right, all right. I'm liking how that's looking. Yeah. Cause and then just kind like of a, a darker version of that? Yeah. Blunk. Bit of a darker version. And <gasps> Vin Mist has uh mimic question mm -hmm. mimics can store items inside them like a bag of holding correct kinda uh so why would you not want a tamed familiar in the shape of a ring that can instantly store and return items to your hand would allow for a uh, fun rolling to see if it retrieves the right item if you use in combat with a weapon swap i mean you can the if we're talking about uh rules as written you know because wow. you're you're your DM can do whatever they want in mm -hmm. your game because that's half the fun. But the rules as written, first off, you got to tame the mimic. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Second off, it's you can't really store things in a mimic because that's called being eaten. Mm -hmm. So that's the dark brown I went for. Ah, okay. Yeah. And I think I might, no, nah, not actually. No, because I mixed black in this one. So it's, it's acting nice and thinned out as it is. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to, we have the seat to paint, except I'm not going to paint the brush I just mixed everything with. We have the seat to paint and actually, hey, I'm going to use my angled brush. Why not? For hey. Because I can show you how an angled brush works better. That makes sense. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to hopefully keep this in frame. Oh, there we go. Does that show? Yeah. And I'm just going to take that brush and Paint the wood seat like so. 
I'm trying not to get too much paint in the socket joining area. So I'm keeping this just on the outside and I'm not getting into the key met, the key point, which is the more recessed hole in the seat. Yeah, I got a little too much purple in there accidentally, but okay. I think it'll still be okay. Yeah. But yeah, you can see how going in with the angled brush helps. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to do that yeah. with one of my with yeah. one of my brushes. That looks very, very useful. <laughs> oh, I missed a bit of purple. Whoops, I gotta fix that. I'll fix that once I finish getting some uh, dark brown in here. I noticed the same thing myself. So yep, yeah, I'm gonna be doing the same thing. Yeah. All right, there we go. I think I got the commode. <laughs> switch quickly over to a different brush and do the part of the purple I missed. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm going to be quiet for a second because I got a brush in my mouth. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Hemingway has officially fallen asleep. <laughs> I mean, then we're doing our job, right? Yeah. To be honest, we started getting sleepy when we were doing those um, NPR voices. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this nice. I like this sound. This is a good voice. Mm -hmm. Snap. Snap. Uh -huh. I think, I, I think okay, my eyes are translating that as a bit of tooth. And then really it was gum. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. So, let's see here. I'm going to do a little bit more edging around. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your patience as I took mm -hmm. care of that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Daisy Crazy says, what is the best champion in the midsummer event? Um, uh, there's not really a best champion. I know that's not the answer you're looking for, but I'll clarify, and I'll give you a couple of different answers. Mm -hmm. You want to get all three. Yeah. Because eventually you're going to want to have all of the champions so you can have a very deep roster. Um, if you need to focus on one, I would focus on Valentine because she's the newest champion to come out. And the Black Dice Society is the latest affiliation. And so I think you're going to have a lot of fun with that. Um, but there's not really a best champion um, and I definitely would suggest even, even if all you do is play the other two champions free plays so that you can unlock them and then don't do anything else, definitely get all three if you can. Mm -hmm. It's like Pokemon. Got to catch them all first and then. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So now I'm just going in and I'm edging to get the brown for the wood on the inside of the outhouse. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm doing the side panels first and just very carefully running my brush. I'm not even trying to get this on the technical inside of the wood. I am literally just taking it on the side of the molding, I guess. Yeah, molding. That makes sense. Yeah. No, oh, no, not, not, don't, not in the paint. <laughs> Brushes rolling in the paint. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, Magic Wand says, what happens when you throw a portable hole into an outhouse? And Lurking Writer says, congratulations, you've invented fantasy, you've invented fantasy plumbing. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I also am putting a little bit of brown on that strip that's inside the mouth. Again, just focusing on the, focusing on the flat surface. I'm not trying to get around the edges or anything like that. But just enough to hint to how can I get a good angle? There we go. Hint to the color of it. Like that. Yeah. All right. An infuriated mass. That's a that's a fun name. Hello, this is my first event. Hey, hey. welcome. Thanks for joining us. Does anyone know? the thresholds at which you get event silver chess. I understand it's 50 for the first one. Is it every 50? Uh, yeah, if you're playing free plays. So get yourself to 50 and then you can keep going if you want, if you want to earn favor or um, 
are you if you're doing other things but 50 at the free play is what gets you a chest uh and there is a chance it's a gold chest it's not always a silver chest um and yeah that is that is what a lot of us do once we've unlocked the new champion is just playing a lot of free plays in order to get as much gear for them as possible i have a a team 100 percent dedicated to just valentine gear and ironically enough valentine is not in that formation <laughs> <laughs> partially because i'm still gearing her up but also because uh that formation i tend to fill with uh, speed champions and gold mm -hmm. fine champions. Um, and then I've also been putting either Nahara or Dahani in there so that they can um, work on getting a lot of kills because both of them are powered up by, well, Nahara is powered up by going through uh, adventure areas because she, she gets her memories back mm -hmm. and Dahani gets powered up by destroying a lot of a lot of monsters Murder so herb. i kind of i've been going back and forth with the two of them so that i can um get their numbers super high because i like both of them there you go so yeah so yes we're basically right now for the mini it's just all the wood is getting painted brown that's what i'm doing. And we're starting with the inside but then eventually going yeah. to the outside yeah it's a it's so much easier to start with the inside portion first and then work the outside yeah, that because makes sense. Because you can, you can use the outside as like support as you're trying to hold the mini steady. Yeah. As opposed to worrying about getting your fingers wet with paint. So start with the inside and then work your way to the outside is what we're going to do. I just had to thin my paint a little bit because mm. uh, I love all the texture on this wood. And I definitely don't want to lose it yeah. in the painting. Yeah, that could definitely happen if you overload your brush and you start putting too much paint onto the mini because both the mini and the paint are plastic. Acrylics is what plastics, acrylics are plastics. So when it dries, it becomes this hard thing. So if you have a big dollop of paint and some fine detail and it dries, bye-bye fine dollop of paint. Yeah. Or fine dollop always... of detail because of dollop yeah. of paint. You can always put on more. Yes. Easier to add than to take away. That is for sure. Yeah. <laughs> ah, V, here's a, a question for you Please. from Magic Wand. How much of this do you plan ahead? Or have you done this so much you can figure out what layers you want as you go? And is that from experience or are there general patterns and strategies? So what I do for paint and slay um, is, and this is for the sake of people who want to paint along with us, I will sit down with a mini, I will look at the official art um, and I will look at how the end result is for the art. And from there, I sort of deconstruct how I would layer the paints and everything like that. And I create a quick sheet of notes for myself and color combinations and everything like that. So I sort of go from top down to figure out how to get to the base colors and we'll make note of that. Now I can do this all visually, mentally in my head. So yes, I could pick up a mini and just start painting it and go from there. Um, but because I want to make sure that you all know what paint colors are going to be using, et cetera, et cetera. And how for the sake of a faster paint, um, have the notes already pulled together. So instead of being like, Hmm, what do I want to do next? Uh, let me think about it. It's like, look at the next stuff that I wrote down and do that. So I'm able to look at minis now and just sort of figure out from looking at the art to the mini, what I want to do from there. But I will sit down and make notes ahead of time for the stream itself. When I'm doing my own mini painting, just, you know, off the cuff, I really don't make notes for myself. I have usually three to four references of art available. Um, depending on whether I want the color inspiration, the actual physical look of what I am painting to look like the official art. Um, but I'll just visually go from my references if it's just my own mini painting time. And there have been times on, even on this show and where we've gotten Switched to a point up, yeah. and you're like, eh, let's do this instead. Yep. Um, or you've offered a couple of alternatives. Mm -hmm. Um, like well, when we I did mean, the hell wasps, you did a different color combination than what I had noted. I was just thinking about those yeah. hell wasps. Yep. Because yeah, those were those were lots of fun. Yeah, they they really are fun. Okay, I think I have. Oh, let me get this part. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing the same. I'm like eyeing everywhere I can. Yeah. On the inside before I go to the outside. 
It's also tricky because I'm trying not to paint the hinges of the door too much because that's going to get black in the long run. Oh. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> if you've already painted, just make sure you're doing this a lot to keep the paint from seizing up on you. All right. I was just trying to be really uh, light handed to do yeah. to prevent that from happening. But I will also I will also just move things about. Yeah, just, you know, every so often give it a little wiggle. Considering I'd already uh, pulled mine off of the hinges, it might actually be an help. unintentional good thing. Yeah. Like, whoopsie. Oh, yep. So I am going to oh. paint the door next before I go again, because being able to hold this helps. So yeah. before I move to the other sides of the out outbox the outhouse i'm gonna now paint the door up so i'm moving from inside to the door itself both sides of the door i just saw another bit of purple i missed Ugh. oh the inside of that mouth yo it has details and it has nooks and crannies yep so many nooks and crannies it really does but that's okay. That is. It makes for like a really interesting texture on the inside. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and every once in a while, I'm like, is anyone ever really going to see that section? Yeah. And that's just it. Like there are some points it's like, how much do you really want to get into that section? Is it really going to matter once you put it onto the table or just up on display and people aren't taking a big look at it type of thing? Yeah. Um, which is totally up to the mini painter themselves as to how they want to handle it. Uh, Snitchels mm. has a, oh, I don't know if it's a question, but just wanted to say I started Idol Champions with the promotion through Epic Games and my favorite part of it is this channel. Oh, hey, thank you. That's Welcome. Fantastic. Thank you we much. do a lot of streaming on, on Idol Champions. We try to not only help out in the game, but also do these uh, slightly more esoteric streams just for funsies because yeah. the D, D world is pretty vast and big and a lot of people not everybody but a lot of people who play our games also are fans of D, D at least if if not actively playing in a group and so you know why not paint some minis why not uh make some pancakes yep <laughs> why not talk to the people who make the minis and the pancakes <laughs> so yeah i'm glad you could join us yeah we definitely do a lot of streaming. I think this this company, as a company, we do, um, we do. A way more streaming than I know most companies do. We've found it to be a great way in order to uh, keep in touch with our community because we do get a lot of people who come by and ask questions or just hang out. Um, and our game mm -hmm. is kind of perfect for that, especially for those of us who uh, are more of a, a passive player you would play, kind of put the game to the side, mm -hmm. and then uh, come back after a couple minutes. So having something else to to do to listen to is super fun. It really, it's a great combination in my book. Honestly, the only reason I don't have the game running right now is because we're streaming. So I'm trying to yeah. conserve my yeah. internet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think I'm actually gonna let this door dry because it's flapping back and forth. So I'm going to let the door dry on the one side. So while that's drying on one side, I'm going to go towards what side is this? I don't know. Yeah, another the side. opposite side where the door is the opposite side where the door is. I'm going to start painting that outside section. Yeah, I think I'm going to follow suit, but I'm going to at least try to get the outer edge of the door. Yeah. Oh yeah. I did that part. It's just the flat side itself. I'm kind of like, Arr. yeah, it's a little finicky and floppy. It's really easier if I can just brace a, even a fingernail against it. Yeah. Now, with this wood of the texture, the texture of the wood, the wood of the texture, with the texture of the wood, definitely make sure you're pulling your brush through the direction of the wood grain to get the paint into those grooves rather than working across. Hmm. Because we're getting the base color in, we're not doing a dry brush technique. So in this case, you actually do want your bristles to go into the grooves and the knots. And the back of this has a lot of them. It really do. Which is really cool. I actually, I like how intentionally the back of the outhouse, I don't know how well it'll show up on mine. Uh, actually, yeah, you can kind of see it right there. 
intentionally do not fit perfectly yeah. together. Yeah. Like this it's mimic is really rickety, on top of their yeah. stuff. It's got the rickety weathered look to it, which I love. Yeah. All right. I think I need to add a little bit of water to my paint because my paint is starting to dry. You can use a wet palette. That's how how interesting my <laughs> the heat in my room is. Hi, sleepyhead. Huh? You can do a stretchy wake? You can do a stretchy wake? I'm still doing okay with mine staying wet. So That's we'll good. we'll see what happens. Uh, but meanwhile, multiple man army wants to know any plans for a sign or writing on the outside of the outhouse. I don't oh, that's think adorable. so, but that's that's a cool idea. That is fun. Um, I've done stuff like that in the past where I've made a sign for something. It was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Um, I think if if this was a real outhouse, I'd be all over that. Yeah, I'd be I would that suggestion. I'd be like, yes, absolutely. We need to do a sign or something. But since mm -hmm. it's a mimic. Yeah. I'm kind of leaning towards no, but I, I love the idea. It's a fun idea. Yeah. And I could definitely see some mimics adding that extra little bit of flair. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does have the the half moon on the front, it which do. is not a, a, a sign per se, no, but it's it just does nod to. Even my sponge is dry in my wet palette. It's it's a little hot in this room, I guess. Whoopsie. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, Ascara wants to know, uh, are there other familiars than those in the shop? Yes. Uh, so the vast majority of familiars are those that you can find in the shop shop, but there are a couple that you can get for gems. So just as you're playing and earning gems from boss bags, you can use those to buy a couple familiars. Um, familiars come in a bunch of different packs. And when you get far enough in the game, and it doesn't take too long to unlock patrons, each of the patrons have familiars that you can purchase from them using their specific patron currency. So there are quite a number of familiars that you can get just by playing the game. And then on a regular, on a semi-regular basis, we do fun things that will then uh, let you earn a familiar. Uh, for example, we just, well, not just, a little while ago, we did um, the Idol Champions Presents Court of the Raven Queen mm -hmm. uh, d and stream, which we do d and streams on a regular basis. And the big ones like that include audience participation, where you can vote in Idol Champions for things to happen in the d and game and the you get basically rewarded for voting no matter what happens and one of the rewards this year was the baby dark mantle familiar which is so adorable it's so cute and further proof that uh pretty much every monster in baby format is adorable yeah. ba babies are just universally adorable so yeah. uh but if you've if you've just started out, then yeah, you are probably looking at uh, earning enough gems to get the couple of familiars that you can get with gems. And going from there, and I think I'm on the top. I think. I'm having that moment in where I, sometimes I can't tell whether I've missed a spot or mm. it's just the light bouncing off of right? it. Yeah, no, that's definitely a thing. All right, going to have to come back to that. Meanwhile, I will to the roof, to the roof, to the roof. Um, Daisy Crazy asks, is there a time when Lauren and V show their collection of painted figures? Ooh. Uh, well, both of us will post on Twitter pictures of mm -hmm. our progress of these minis. Um, you can't see it right now, but I I have all mine uh, right there. So that they're they're on shelves right there. Uh, I'll take a picture of the the whole collection. It includes all the minis that I painted on Paint and Slay plus um, the few other minis that I've painted before Paint and Slay, which were all um player characters of mine <laughs> multiple orc <-eras laughs> and a couple of others well I, i've been very fortunate some people have gifted me um when i guessed it on d4 they made me yeah, an orc era mini yeah, and, and yeah and i mean you, you know the joy of getting a custom painted mini from d4 because those those folks are kind of amazing yeah. uh 
so yeah, I have several orc heroes and then a couple of other uh, uh, player characters and stuff. But yeah, I've got all mine on display, as it were. Uh, v, I would, I know you've got some on display, but I would imagine trying to take a picture of your collection <laughs> might be impossible. Yeah, uh, <laughs> my collection is Instagram. <laughs> There you go. I try and put a lot of my minis onto Instagram also. A lot of my minis are just packed away right now. Uh, once I get things sort of reestablished and have like a nice little setup going where I can display my minis, I will take pictures to show just the extent of what I have in my possession. Yeah. Um, but for right now, I kind of, I, I keep them out for about a month and then I'll um, get them just kind of packed up and tucked away for a little bit because I have a lot <laughs> is the issue. <laughs> Enjoying a lot of them. Yeah. I I am getting to the point. I've I've gotten to the point once in where I've had to expand the the space that my display minis take up, mm -hmm. partially because we did a couple of very big minis. Yes. Or relatively big minis. Yeah. And then partially just because we've we've had 36 episodes and so yeah. I've done a lot of minis. Um but I am I'm getting to that point again and where I think either I'm gonna have to expand how much space I give to displaying minis, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna have to start deciding on which ones to keep out and which ones to put away. Yeah, Aww. I actually have my eye on um, like a CD DVD display cabinets because Ooh. those can actually work really well for mini display because they're not as deep as traditional cabinets. Um, but it's just finding the style of one that I like the look of. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Just going back in because in thinning out my paint a little bit, it got slightly streaky at one point. So I'm quickly fixing that. There we go. Yeah, I'm just finishing up the door. I've gone back to the door. The door. <sighs> do, do, do. Plus, it's an old outhouse, so streaky weathered wood is not necessarily a bad thing. Exactly. Okay. All right. So there's that. All of the brown is in and what i'm actually gonna do in the bottom of this once it's all painted up i'm not gonna worry about painting it um the wood color i'm actually just gonna paint the very base of this black there you go yeah just kind of doing a quick spot check yeah because otherwise you're trying to remix up this specific brown yeah. and that could be it could be a headache yeah but you know what? Spots. This mimic is smart and knows nobody's ever going to look at the bottom of an outhouse. And so why yeah, why not right? just put all of your effort into the color of the places mm -hmm. that the uh, that your prey can see? Effectively. There, there we go. And then, oh, come on. Oh, wrong way. Rawr. 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 I think I even got in the inside of the moon. Yay. Nice. But yeah, I'm also at that point where I, I don't think I'm actually seeing any missing spots. I've just seen yeah, wet just, parts of the paint. I said a couple spots I needed to touch up, but other than that, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. So open the door. Um, Magic Wand says, according to Google, the Crescent Moon is a holdover from illiteracy days and was the female facility sign. Male houses had sons. That makes sense when you think about, yeah, the yeah. Yeah. Uh, where myths and mm -hmm. about the gods and suns and moons and ah, my door came loose again. No, oh, no. there we go. No, just back in just the top. OK, that's not too bad. That's not too yeah. bad. Okay, so we're going to let down. that dry. Yeah. Any other questions that have popped up since we've been... Um, Evil Turnip T asks, so where would this mimic best be placed? In an urban campaign? At the end of a dingy alley? Behind a tavern? Or suspiciously at the end of a, t a long 10-foot wide corridor in a dungeon? Yes. Uh, and <laughs> Schnitzel says, in the middle of an open field with absolutely nothing else around. Yes. Yes to yes. all of it. I yep. Come on. Yeah. Actually, make the field one fun and you put up a couple scarecrows because you know what's going to happen? The players are going to fix it on those scarecrows instead of the yep. outhouse. <laughs> yep. And also, I think it also depends on 
the flavor of your campaign. Yeah. Like I do tend to run my D and D games, um, a, not steampunk, but slightly more technologically advanced, like water deep heads indoor plumbing. So, yeah. um, I would, I would probably outhouses would be somewhere more rural somewhere. Um, yeah, somewhere like in the middle of nowhere, kind of the same way that mm -hmm. you would see uh, portable toilets pop yeah. up around here, like, oh, here's a construction site, or here's a, a place that we just need toilets right. because yeah. it's a, a concert venue or something. Right, so. exactly. I'm going to get a quick picture of Hemingway just chilling out here with us. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, I will take a drink and remind yes. everybody else to drink some water and stretch and go check out our Discord, discord.gg slash idle champions. Mm. <laughs> why go check out our discord because we have a lovely community who are here to help with any of your idol champions questions plus we have um channels specifically for a bunch of the shows like paint and slay Yay. so if you'd like to join in the fun of painting along with us we post in the channel the what you need mm -hmm. uh the basics for what you need if you just want the um the list of hey i want some basic supplies to get started he uh we list basically exactly what I bought, which is a set of brushes, a set of paints, um, a mini, mm -hmm. <laughs> paper plates, paper cups. Um, I think that's really it. That's yeah. like, it, it was a basic set of brushes, a basic yeah. set of paints and- Paper towels, you know, water cup type paper, of thing. Yep. Yeah. I also use uh, pill bottles with the sticky tack on the top yeah. for my, um, uh, being able to hold my stuff because you know i'm in my 40s i got a lot of pill bottles <laughs> Ta -da! okay Yay! so now we're gonna go to leather brown which is a more yellow toned tan is really the color that would be and we're gonna paint the tooths we're gonna give the base color to the teeth in leather brown so you'll want a detail brush to do this part where did my leather brown go there you are okay just straight leather brown straight leather brown all right. If mine would stop blowing bubbles. There we go. Bubbles. Bubbles. Oh, and the lurking writer suggests next to the entrance of an abandoned mine. Nothing else around it. Open the door and a purple worm eats you and the mimic. <laughs> Dear Lord. You get eaten by the mimic who's being eaten by a purple worm. I mean, that's that, that's that's an inception attack inception right there. That's the start of uh, a whole section of your campaign for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, teeth. All right, toothsies. Here we go. All the browns. Yep. All the teeth are brown. <laughs> I think actually this is the first creature where we've just gone straight up brown yeah. for teeth. Like, I think we've either well, done- Well, we're gonna do some um, highlighting on these with a lighter tone. Okay. But I want right. these to be gnarly looking teeth. Yeah. Because it's a mimic and it's an outhouse mimic to boot. Mm -hmm. So the color story in my head was like, yes, it has, you know, noticeable teeth, but the teeth are like yellow and raggedy and gross looking. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're going to pretend to be an outhouse, nothing about you is going to be pristine. No. Even after you've revealed yourself. Yeah. <laughs> even after you've gone and, and now I am your mimic for today. Now I have that song stuck in my head. I did it to myself. Eh, it's not a bad song. It's not a bad right? song. Really, it's I've not had, a bad song. I've had I'm a Mimic, the Jason Charles Miller, um, oh, God, Dylan yes. Wilkes, Bardic Inspiration song. Yep, yep, that's <laughs> I'm a Mimic, which that we Shoot, could sing. I should, have, I should have grabbed that song. For next time. Next time. Yeah, because we're doing the, the mimic next week as well, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like, someone, someone remind me to download, and we can have background music. There you go. But someone, so, not now. Not now, uh, chat. Just... Yeah, chat. I have a, uh, an assignment for you. So we go into uh, we are on until one fifty because we leave Garwar some time for Garwar's guide to everything, for Garwar to be able to get on and get ready before his show. So 148, please remind us to get the Bardic Inspiration soundtrack for this, uh, for this mimic. Yeah. And if you just say Bardic Inspiration soundtrack, we'll know what you're talking about. Yeah. 
There you go. Putting chat to work. That's why you came here, right, chat? To put to work. <laughs> team Abbott, go team. Yay! Yay! Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have thought that this was a gnarly color of brown without already having painted the brown of the wood, mm -hmm. but specifically next to the wood, yeah. it is, it's a gnarly yellowish yeah. brown. Yeah. It is super cool. See, and this is where having the angled brush would come in handy because I would love to get the back of the teeth easily. You know. I might uh, switch to it because of that. <laughs> now that you mention it. Yuck, yuck, yeah. Yeah. This 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 might be a I will get the back of the teeth later when I've made myself an angled brush. That's and especially since this is leather brown. It's not like we're mixing something. This yeah. might be interesting to show on cam. I don't think I'm going to be able to keep this in frame. I got to pull this out from underneath. I might have yeah, I'm going to turn my back on the camera. Sorry, y'all. <gasps> no. Well, because I need the light. And the light, you know, <laughs> going where the light goes. No, that's fine. Um, Genemesis13 asks, does tack or what the sticky stuff is called dry out? I sometimes, sometimes start painting my Mimi. <laughs> Mimmies. Me Mimmies. Oof. I talk for a living. I sometimes start painting my minis and then don't finish with them for months. Should I put the tack in a container of some sort? Um, um d d d d okay, so tack eventually will dry out. Yeah. But keep in mind, it's one of those things where this stuff is basically made so that people can hang up posters on the wall. So it, it does keep some of its moisture for an extended period of time. What I have found though, is that when tack has been attached to a mini for months or for an extended period of time for more than a few weeks, like Lauren and I will do, um, you might find that the tack is sort of melding into the plastic, like it melts into the details and everything. So it'll be harder to remove. So if it is something where um, you're not going to keep painting the mini and then be done within like a couple of weeks. I would take the mini off the tack just to prevent that melting melding issue from happening. Uh, in terms of, uh, will it go dry? It eventually goes, I, I, I say it goes off. It just doesn't hold things anymore. Like it loses its, um, tackiness. I guess viscosity in a little bit of a way, but it'll lose yeah. its tackiness. It won't hold things as well. And that's when you know it's time to chuck the tack. And for example, especially since I use a whole bunch of these pill bottles, um, because we usually get through our minis within a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. um, especially the smaller ones, like the bigger yeah. ones, I think we've done four episodes four at max. Most. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but those bigger ones, we're not putting mm -hmm. sticky tack on a, on a bottle. The little ones are usually getting through. So you're talking about two weeks. Those I tend to leave on yeah. and it's fine. Uh, and then after I take it off, I will take the sticky tack off. And then um, if you have, if you joined us last week for paint and slay or the last couple of weeks and we did the Chimera paint and slay kit, um, they come with these little, uh, I guess they're supposed to be water bottles. It's water cups. Water, yep. A water cup. I use this to store all my sticky tack so in, but just put it on in there. So just something that can seal and yeah. then I've had the same sticky tack for months. I just use the same bits over and over and over again, and it's been great. And it's also funny because there's paint all over a bunch of them. So sometimes I pull out some sticky tack and I'm like, oh, this is this is the green dragon. Uh -huh. This is the bit of the green dragon I painted. Yeah. This is the, oh, these are the, um, the Modrons that I painted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I have definitely found, um, I, I haven't had a problem with the mini on the sticky tack for long, but the longest we've gone is, you know, two or three weeks, yeah. but I definitely then pull the sticky tack off and yeah. store it when it's not actively holding on a mini. I had a mini that I forgot. I had a mini I forgot that I was doing for about six months. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so it was one of those things where I went to go and take it off the tack and that turned into an interesting Basically, you can take the tack and like go dick, 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 dick against itself and it'll start pulling it away. Th that took a little bit of time to remove what was there. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And the other good thing is sticky tack is pretty cheap. 
I, I was able to get at the dollar store. So yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not a huge investment. If you're, if you get a couple months out of your sticky tack or a year or two, and then, it, yeah. and then you got to go get some more, but Hey, listen, everybody is trying to be thrifty is a good thing. Trying mm -hmm. to not throw things away that are still good and just being able to seal it works. Yeah. Um, and I, don't know why I went mute for a big section oh, there. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. Uh, yeah. Oh, Escara is asking, what is tack? Here, let me grab. Uh, so we could be talking about a couple of different things. Uh, but what I get is uh, mounting putty, mm -hmm. which is literally sticky tack. It, it looks like putty. And yeah. it's also it called comes... poster tack. Um, yes. Sticky tack, blue tack um hanging tack not to be confused with horse tack and it comes in those little um you just strips. buy them for a buck or two and it comes in strips which obviously you can't see because <laughs> my camera is like that's You're just like, a white nah. piece of paper mm -hmm. uh, and it literally is just a sticky kind of tack and you're supposed to use it, uh, as V said, to yeah. mount posters on the wall or, or like something that might be impermanent mm -hmm. uh, because it doesn't ruin paint when you peel it off the wall. And so for the same reason, it's pretty good to use for mounting minis onto pill bottles yeah. or whatever you want to mount them on for ease of painting. And, and now back to you from now, the top. Holy uh, moly. I immediately started playing with my sticky tack because it's like a yeah. stress ball almost. I just immediately. Yeah. I just got a pen. I bought one of, um, Bard and Barbarian's mm. wood pens mm -hmm. and I love it and it's yeah. wonderful. And I can't use it when I need to use the microphone at the same time oh. because it has a magnetic cap on it, which is wonderful, but uh, I play with it. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I just automatically sit there yep. and so I can't. Yep. Mm. Yep. Tooths. Yeah. Toofers. And let me show you this while that's drying, because I do want that to dry before we go to the next step. Let me just show you the um with my overhead camera, the nature of this tack. So yeah, as Lauren said, you'll see it comes in. Actually, do I have it? Anything comparable to I do. Okay, so mine is actually orange. Um, and it's come in a brick like this, but they'll come in strips, narrow mm. strips as well. Um, so this is my tack. And when you take it out, you just rip a piece off. And you can see, it's like, I don't know if you ever played with silly putty as a kid, kind of like silly putty, but it's not silly putty. Don't use silly putty. It's not gonna have the same thing. Silly putty does not grip um, like this will. So you basically just take it and you plunk it onto the bottom of a mini like so, and then you would push this onto, oh, this works out beautifully for an example. Hey. Helen. I'm helping. Yay. So you just Thanks, push it Helen. on into the top and now look at that. There you go. Ta -da. Mounted. Mounted up there. And then when you're done, you just can, well, this was just done, so it just popped right off, but you just pull it apart and you might find that it kind of does this a little bit on the mini. If it ever gets stuck on the base of the mini, you just literally would take your tack and do this to blot off the residual bits that's left. That's tack. Yeah. Very it's pretty helpful. easy to get off. Yeah. And yeah. and yes, the lurking writer, I agree. These mimics really need some dental health help, but then who'd be brave or stupid enough to do that? Yeah. Open up and say ah and say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. All right. What is next? Yeah. Uh, we have a next. Few minutes. We have a few so. minutes. Oh, about ten minutes. Let me see here. According to my notes. Oh, we could do the eyes. We can add highlight dots to the eyes with dead white. Because those I know are definitely dry. Is this where I should pull out a toothpick? Uh, if you want to do a toothpick, you can do a toothpick. Hey, what you thinking, buddy? You do a stretch. You do I a sleepy have a, stretch. Ooh, I've become stretch. a convert of toothpicks for eyeballs. Yeah. Do I have toothpicks in here? Let me see if I have toothpicks. I can show the toothpick trick. Toothpick. 
Also, for those of you who are wondering about pill bottles and um, why I use them a lot, well, I have them in multiple sizes. And not only that, but when you have them in multiple sizes, they fit inside each other. Yes. So they're easy storage. Yeah, so, hey, pull off the labels, reuse these things yep. for, for happy purposes. No, you can't have my cat. <laughs> Dingens 11, I saw that. He mine. He my sweet what? boy. Okay, so I'm going to go right for dead white. All right. And these are like highlight dots. So we're not making these pupils. So you don't have to go right for the center of the eye. In fact, if anything, pick an offset of the eye and then just try and get about the same spot for each of those. Okay. So I'm just going, I'm also going to use a toothpick to show. Nice, you know, tip of the toothpick. I will dip it into the dead white and it gives, I don't know if it's going to show, just gives a little bit of paint at the tip of the toothpick. And then I'm going to go to the eyes. And I think I'm going to do my dot. Actually. I'm just watching because you said off center because these are highlights. So I'm interested. So see, just place it so it is kind of high and right. Okay. Of the eyeball. So it looks like a little glint of highlight as opposed to a peep. And then the same general area for each eyeball yeah cool mm -hmm. and the reason i i was so excited about using a toothpick is just it's it is so brush. i have found it very useful for in this case it's highlighting but um for specifically for pupils and for eyes you just want that one one dot it's I have found it perfect. It's not for everybody, but the first time I tried it, I'm like, well, this is it. I'm using all my toothpicks. What's going on? You're laughing. He is watching you on my other screen. Hi. Hemingway. He's just like watching you like this. Hemingway is also excited about using toothpicks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have 250 of these, so I might as well use them. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, they're... They're not for everybody, but I personally have found it to be invaluable when getting uh, for mm -hmm. dots in eyes instead of trying to a brush because the instant a brush, e even the smallest brush touches and then it flexes a little bit and then I am making, making a mess. There we go. There we go. Do, do, do. Yay. Yeah, do Mine's not going to show up quite, quite as nicely, but no. This is why I take pictures to put up on social media afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, and now would be a good time. We've only got about 10 minutes left. So if you do have any other questions about minis, about uh, mimics, about mm -hmm. idol champions, go ahead and put those in now so that Martin can grab those. Cause after us is Garwar's guide to everything. Yes. Uh, Garwar is awesome. And if there are questions that you have that I cannot answer, which, there are some. Garwar can answer. Garwar's got a guide for that. Do you stretch? You do a stretch. Oh, give me, give me, give me, give me. Okay, so what I actually, I forgot to mention, we're going to want to wash. So if you want to grab oh, your okay. Agrax. Grab your Agrax, which is just basically a brown wash we're going to use. And we're right. going to wash because this is actually dry enough now. We're going to do the wash today. Um, not worrying about the black bits yet because those, once it's black, it's pretty much black. You know, it's, it's not something that wash is going to enhance as much. Um, so we're going to basically wash the entire mini inside, outside and tongue and give it a chance to dry between sessions. And then we'll go into doing highlights and detail work next week. Nice. Yes. Although you say that and we've already done we've a done lot a of detail details. work. Yeah. 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 There's, there's more, but wait, there's more. But wait. There's more. Yes. Ooh. And for those who do not have, I know you kind of quickly said it, but mm -hmm. for those who don't have a wash and need to make a wash using the paints that they have, what do they do? You basically just mix up some brown paint with water, clean water, not rinse water, clean water. And you create a broth like consistency of the paint to water ratio and that becomes a wash for you. Quick little DIY at home wash. And washes are fun. 
Washes are fun. Vinos, washes are my favorite part of, yes. of mini yes. painting. <laughs> it's a wash. Yeah. But what it, it does gets... is it starts to bring out the details. Yeah. Of the mini. And especially and, with all this wood yeah. grain, it's oh, so yeah. good. And I'm doing the wash in the middle as opposed to at the end because I really want that wood grain to pop. So I'm doing the wash now so that when we go in to do the wood grain with dry brush, it's really going to feature beautifully. And the other nice thing about a wash is all those little tiny, like microscopic little places mm -hmm. that now it's like, oh, I see a spot that I missed or a spot that I missed over there. Mm -hmm. I didn't quite cover out. quite so much. Yeah. The wash makes it go away. <laughs> it helps for sure. The wash makes everything better. Calgon, take me away. Yep. It's sort of like how we painted. I'm doing the inside of everything first and then I'll take it to the outside points for washing. Whereas I, I will admit, I just did it the other way around <laughs> because I'm like, I want to give those eyes a couple more seconds to dry. And so yeah. I started with the outside, but it's a wash. It'll be fine. Exactly. Man, this really feels like um, painting a, a an actual wooden structure like because mm -hmm. i'm just doing this on the back side of the of the door and right. it just literally feels like oh, i'm just painting a, a door it's a door all right let's get the inside Merp. mini do 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 okay now i go to the outside on my side Oh yes, I see the lurking writer giving some uh, very good advice. Uh, if you are new to the game, there is a lot. It, it's a, a surprisingly deep game. And I say surprisingly, because there's a lot there that people don't even know is there. Things like I see people talking about uh, the little tiny H uh, on the bottom right-hand side of the screen. If you hover over that, that tells you what all the hotkeys are for the game. It's small. It's easily missed. There's a lot going on in the game. So do not feel bad if you have questions. There are no basic questions. There are no, um, you know, hey, this is this is a question I, I think has probably been asked 20 million times. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? You ask it because for every person in chat who asks one of those really good questions, there's a couple dozen of uh, people who are lurking who are just listening along, who have that exact same question and are going to be thankful that you asked it. So uh, do not ever feel ashamed or bad about asking those questions. That's how you learn. And uh, um, even if it is a question that some of the more veteran players have answered many, many times, we're always happy to answer it again because yeah, yeah it's just, it's just the way the game works. And that's half the fun. Exactly. Arr. Do yeah, 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 yeah. And this, I'm, this gives the wash a nice, good amount of time to dry before we go into dry brushing. So we don't have to worry about the colors getting muddied or pulled up by accident. Yeah, Somehow yeah. Because I can nice. imagine, even in your heat, it's yeah, gonna this take is going to take a little. little bit of time. But yeah, you can see already how the wood grain has drastically been brought out. Yeah, just by adding that wash on. And you said we're also doing the tongue. Yep, also doing the tongue. Okay, so I'm done Yay. with the outhouse itself. You sit there. Brown tongue. Do, do, do. Not really a brown tongue, but. What, buddy? Aw, Kitty knows that we're almost out of time. Yeah. Been Get getting all talk? this attention. A couple hundred people in chat <laughs> watching, watching paint and kitty time. Kitty is sad. Oh, hello, sir. <laughs> <laughs> is this also going to be one of those things where we're going to take the tongue and we're going to use the the Mod Podge, um, the glossy yes. on it? Yes, next week we can absolutely do that. Because quite frankly, the tongue is done. And the really tongue? all that's the tongue is done. Done. Is done. Uh, the rest of the teeth we need to dry brush uh, next week, but we're going to do that first ish so actually no we will do that first so that will be dry enough so the end we can do the uh mod podge gloss mod podge ultra gloss 
mm -hmm. then use the Mod Podge mat for the wood. Yeah. And thank you, Leo Lowen, and anyone else who has already put into chat. We have to remember mm -hmm. the Bardic mm -hmm. Inspiration soundtrack. I know. The trick is, is like I have to break down everything, and then once I sit back down, then it's to remember. So really, someone <laughs> tweet at me Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> there you go oh god so we will both try to remember yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. we made some really good progress today yeah that's why i said like i i i know you had other plans yep. and other things to do but like if i when i started mini painting had done this I'd be super impressed with myself. I'd be like, and I'm done. Holy crap. This yep. is amazing. So well, we're going to have some fun next week. We're going to bring out the details of these teeth a little bit more going with some bone white. I also thought it would be fun that once we do some dry brushing, um, just to bring out the wood grain a little bit more, we're going to go in and start giving it like little like green mildew moss mold growth Ooh. around the base of it and kind of bringing yeah. it up a little bit. So really making this look like an old beat up outhouse on the outside. And then you open up the door and rawr on the inside. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that actually uh, half answers a question that G Nemesis 13 had, mm -hmm. which was, I normally use a spray varnish afterwards. Do you use that or some other sort of sealer? Um, you can use a spray varnish if you want to. I, however, tend to go in with brush uh, as it is. Uh, my Mod Podge, hold on, the Mod Podge Ultra, not Mod Podge like you use for decoupage. I'm trying to grab it without dropping it. So this is Mod Podge Ultra, and it does have a spray action. So you can spray this onto your minis if you want to. However, I find um, you get a really good consistent coverage by just taking the cap off, dipping it in, because this is, you know, this is liquid. Um, so I will just dip That's my brush in. an interesting bit of ASMR there for us. Right? <laughs> but I will paint with this liquid form onto my minis to get a nice, really good coating onto my miniatures. Um, the gloss is beautiful. It is shiny. It is gorgeous. It is what I used on Helen's eyeball. Hey, so it's got Helen. a really glossy look. And then I used the matte on her tentacles, which you can tell there's a difference. Um, so that's what we'll do next week. We'll do the seal coating and have some fun with the Mod Podge Ultra. And we did have Archer for Prez asking questions about distractions. Uh, I've just started playing Isle Champions. Welcome. Glad Hi. you could join us. Are familiars really useful? I have two and they don't seem to add much. What about distractions? Are they worth clicking? Ah, uh, familiars get very, very useful um, the more you play the game because they do a whole bunch of things for you automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have two, my suggestion is put them on two of your champions that you want to auto level up while you're playing and that way especially if you're someone like me who puts the game over to the side and does other things for a couple of hours and then goes oh yeah i'm playing Isle champions it'll help you progress a lot more mm -hmm. uh you can also put a familiar on the ultimate bar and it'll roam around and be like ultimate 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 uh and the more you get if you get six of them one two three four five yes six of them and put them out on the field on kind of the the middle right hand side it, they will pick up gold and they'll click on monsters mm -hmm. and segueing into the other question, they will click on distractions and distractions drop gold. And that can be very, very helpful. So um, you don't have to click on the distractions, but they're fun and they drop more gold. And especially at first, it can be very, very, very helpful. Um, and our final question, which is a good one for this show, ding Dingens 11, which color do you use? Um, what Basically asking what paints do we use, which is we, uh, a good place. Yeah. So for the paints that we're using on the show, we feature Vallejo game color line. Uh, Vallejo also has a model color line, uh, but we focus on game color. And then for the washes, I, I am a Citadel wash girl. Um, so I just use the Citadel Agrax Earthshade for today. Um, so those tend to be the brands that we use just because uh vallejo had a nice kit that i could recommend to lauren so she can get all the colors and we can work from base colors and go out from there um yep. and you know really like i said it's it's really if you have other paint lines that you prefer to use go for it that is completely your preference i'm not going to say one is greater than the other um with washes i will say citadel is the best wash in my in my opinion i think citadel washes are the best um but honestly when it comes to paints just play around, see what you like the look of and the feel of the best is what it yeah. boils down to for you. 
And if you're brand new to mini painting and you want to follow along with what I am literally using, uh, as I said, come to our Discord, yes. discord.gg slash idle champions. The uh, pinned information, the very first pin, so you might have to do a little bit of scrolling, mm. is literally here are the basic supplies you need. Uh, and so it includes the information about that paint set that I use, the brush set that I use, um, basically everything that I'm using and painting along with. And uh, with the exception of the minis, I have not needed to buy anything since. So we've done 36 episodes, yeah. you know, multiple minis, the paints last for a very long time. I've bought a couple of other things for funsies, but everything on there and it's relatively yeah very inexpensive you yeah. know a lot of it's just like paper plates and paper cups and things mm -hmm. and then valentine <laughs> yes and don't forget this weekend mm -hmm. unlock yo get your valentine on okay make sure yeah. you check that out um i Thank think yeah i think that's everything yeah. thank you to martin for being thank our moderator you. for this show we really appreciate you thank you everybody in chat for joining us for cats and painting so, <laughs> thank you to hemingway for uh hanging out with us this whole He's time and thank you to me right for <laughs> being uh, an excellent teacher. Oh, you're very welcome. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.